Merry Christmas! Hello, and welcome to the Northfield United Methodist Church. This is the Sunday School Post for the week of January 3rd. I said Merry Christmas. Yes, it is still Christmas. Do you remember last time we talked about how Christmas actually lasts for 12 days in the church calendar? We have a season for 12 days of Christmas. So it's still Christmas, and you can still celebrate. And Christmas ends on the 6th of January, which will be this Wednesday, and we move into Epiphany, which is actually still connected to Christmas, though. So it's all kind of related in that season. So let's start with a prayer. Dear God, thank you so much for this time to meet. Thank you so much for the beautiful winter weather and this season. And thank you for Christmas and Epiphany. And bless these words. May they be of you and go out and serve all those who hear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, like I was saying, this week we're going to tr transition from the Christmas season to Epiphany. And the season of Epiphany is actually connected to Christmas, like I was saying. And in Epiphany, we celebrate the story of the wise men coming to visit Jesus and the realization the understanding that Jesus is the Lord. He is Christ. In Christmas, we celebrate the birth with Mary having the child in the stable and the shepherds coming. But in Epiphany, we celebrate the wise men and the realization of what that birth means, that it's God's son, that it's Jesus. So let's start with the Bible reading. And we're gonna read the story of the wise men. I'm gonna hold it up because this one actually has pictures. So camera person, let me know, are we in the frame? Okay, so we're gonna start here. Wise men from the east. This is from Matthew 2, one through 12. Herod had been named king of Israel by the Roman emperor, Caesar Augustus. Herod lived near the city of Jerusalem. After Jesus was born, some wise men from the east came to see Herod. And it says, wise men, these are also called magi. They studied the stars and believed that when a great leader was about to be born, a new star would appear in the sky. The wise men asked him, where is the child who was born to be king of the Jews? We saw a new star in the east. That means a great new leader has come into the world. We have come to worship him. Herod was amazed. Could this child be the one the prophet Micah had told about? Am I still in the frame? Okay. Micah was a Hebrew prophet who lived about 700 BC. He predicted the coming of a ruler in a time of peace. Micah had said that this leader would be born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem was only six miles from Jerusalem. Now Herod was afraid of this newborn king, but he pretended to be glad. He said to the wise men, Go to Bethlehem and search for the child there. If you find him, let me know. I want to go and worship him too. The wise men set out. The star they had seen in the east went on ahead of them. Finally, it stopped over a house in Bethlehem. So good? Mm -hmm. The wise men went into the house and saw the child with Mary. They got down on their knees and worshipped him. They gave him special gifts they had brought with them precious gold and the sweet and strong smelling spices of frankincense and myrrh. Later, the wise men had a dream that told them not to go back to Herod. They went home by another road. Frankincense, so this is what frankincense is. Frankincense resin was ground into a powder that could be burned as incense and used in ointments. Myrrh resin was crushed and used in making expensive perfumes and ointments. And they go on. I'm going to read this story too. The escape to Egypt. After the wise men had gone on their way, Joseph had a dream as he was sleeping. An angel from the Lord came to him and said, Herod is looking for your child and wants to kill him. Get up, hurry, and take the child and his mother to Egypt. Joseph got up right away. He took Jesus and Mary to Egypt that very night. So good? When Herod found out the wise men had tricked him, 
He got very angry. He sent his men to Bethlehem with orders to kill every boy who was two years old or younger. Many families lost their precious sons because of the cruel and jealous king, King Herod. By then, Jesus was safe in Egypt with his parents. They stayed there until Herod was dead. Then God told Joseph to take his son and wife home. They went back to Nazareth in the land of Galilee. Galilee was a town in the Roman province. Uh, uh, Nazareth was a town in the Roman provi province of Galilee. It was Jesus' home during his early youth. So that is the story of the wise men. And like I said earlier, this, this season of Epiphany is the realization, the understanding that Jesus is King. He is Lord. And the story of the wise men helps us to celebrate this. And to have an epiphany means to have a sudden, a, a sudden deep and meaningful understanding or realization about something really important. So you just really understand something. Wow, this is really important all of a sudden. So it's fitting that this church season of Epiphany is about us understanding the importance of Jesus being born. Um, and remember that God sent Jesus to us, to you, because God loves you. Oh, I want to make a, a little point that's kind of interesting, I think. Um, we often think that the wise men came to the manger just like the shepherds and everybody else because that's how it's shown in movies or maybe just simpler to tell the story that way but if you really think about it it says Jesus was in a house in the Bible when they came also they came from very far away who knows exactly how far away but much further east there are some theories about where exactly they came from but much further east than Israel, much further east, so it would have taken them a long time to get there. The shepherds who were in that area of Bethlehem would have gotten there much sooner. So they actually came months later, many months, who knows? Um, so that's just kind of an interesting thing. So they were settled in a house by then, Mary, Joseph, and Jesus, and the wise men showed up. So um, we have a few activities, um, and remember, Epiphany starts on the 6th. That's Wednesday of this week, and we actually have KC3 this, this week on Epiphany, the first night of Epiphany. So if you can make the Zoom at 6.30 on the 6th, Wednesday the 6th, then we'll celebrate Epiphany and do some fun stuff there, some fun things there, okay? Um, but here's some things you can do at home. I don't know if you still have your tree up. Some people take their tree down right away. Some people leave it up for a while. But if you still have it up, you can, um, maybe you already have a star up, but maybe you have an angel. We have an angel on our tree, and on Epiphany, we like to switch that angel to a star, because if you think about it, the angel came to Mary and the shepherds and Joseph and all that, um, but the wise men followed the star, so we like to switch the, the top of the tree to a star. So that's one thing you could do, or you could just make a star ornament, put it on your tree, or make a star and hang it around your house. Hang it up high somewhere if your tree's already gone. So you can just put up a star. Maybe you have one, maybe you can make one. Um, you can sing that great, yeah, let me get my notes. You can sing that great uh, Christmas hymn, or epiphany hymn, really, We Three Kings. And if you don't have a hymnal at home, you can just go online and find it and sing it as a family. Maybe somebody can even play piano or you sing along with something or sing it a cappella without anybody else. Um, and I've got one activity you can do, a craft thing. Remember that, camera person, can you tell me this is in the frame? Closer here. How are we doing? It's good? Okay. So this, so remember that epiphany is the realization that Jesus is our Lord and that Jesus is the Son of God. So that's what we realize in this season. But epiphany means to have a realization about something important. So you might have some other epiphanies or realizations about God. 
And so you can just write those here. You can make a craft kind of like this. And maybe, you know, God loves me. Um, God keeps promises. Some of the things we've talked about. Or maybe you've had your own thoughts. I think that'd be a really neat thing to do this week. So I'm keeping the crafts and activities kind of simple because we're starting back up with school. And um, but this would just be kind of fun, kind of a, a little bit of a gratitude thing too. We're just thinking about how much God loves us and great things about God. So those are the activities you can do this week. And yeah, so you could do those. You can do the star, you can uh, sing the hymn, you can do that realizations about God, epiphanies. And just remember that we are now realizing in this season how much God loves us and why Jesus came. Because Jesus is the Son of God, our Lord, Jesus is Christ. So that's really, really special. And that's just another way that we know how much God loves us. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for this time to meet. Thank you so much for this Christmas and Epiphany season and the beauty of that promise that you have given us. Bless these words as they go out. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.